Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to the five game NBA Christmas Day slate. Super, super excited about this one. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, my name's DK. I make daily videos breaking down NBA, NFL, PGA, and esports, daily fantasy sports slates. Uh, before we get into the video, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you guys again for the continued support. Closing in right now on 7,000 subscribers. If you guys do enjoy this content, would really appreciate it if you leave a like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't want to upload videos so you don't want to go live. I will be live streaming for this one uh, to answer all you guys' questions on Christmas Day. Plan for like 10 30, 10 45 Eastern. Again, I'll tweet it out to, to confirm. Uh, but yeah, go. I'll go live for a good 30, 45 minutes to, to go over everything and answer any questions you guys have. Um, so make sure to check out the live stream on Christmas morning. Um, also, if you guys cannot watch these videos, I do upload an Apple podcast. The link is in the description below to the DK DFS show. Uh, if you guys are interested in signing up for premium content, I now offer that on patreon.com. I'll have a link in the description below as well um, to check out. Uh, I have a bunch of different packages there if you guys are interested in signing up. Uh, and then finally, I want to thank Prize Picks for sponsoring the show. I uh, probably should have it up right now. Um, they do not have any uh, projections up yet. Uh, for the Christmas Day slates, so I'm making this video uh, on the 23rd. Uh, but basically, uh, the site is you, you know you're betting on player pops over under uh, player projections. So if you guys are interested in signing up, you can use the code DKDFS. That's DKDFS, all one word. I'll have a link in the description below as well. 100% uh, match up to $100. But with that, that all out of the way, guys, let's talk about some Christmas NBA. Uh, this is the best day of the year for for NBA. Uh, we have five great games to talk about. So first, let's review the Vegas odds here. We have Pelicans. We have Heat. It's 226 over under. The Heat are five point favorites. Warriors and Bucks at 232 over under. The Bucks are nine and a half point favorites. So this one. You know, Warriors and Bucks has probably the best shot to blow out. But if it does stay close, you could you could see some big games out of guys like Giannis. You know, Middleton had a big game tonight. Steph Curry, we know if like Golden State's gonna stay in this one, he's probably gonna have to have a big game. Uh, Nets and Celtics at 227 over under. The Nets are two and a half point favorites. We have Mavs and Lakers at 229 and a half over under. The Lakers are six point favorites, and Clippers Nuggets at 223 over under. The Nuggets are one point favorites. So. Let's start it off with center. And at the top, we have Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now power forward and center eligible. It used to be you know power forward, small forward eligible last year. Now power forward and center eligible. 10.9K. Um, you know, the price did jump on him. He was, what, 10-2 tonight? So went up to 10-9. The matchup's great. The matchup is fantastic against Golden State. You saw what this Brooklyn did, the, the Brooklyn team did to Golden State uh, on opening night. So, if this game does stay close, you could see a massive, massive game from Giannis headed to the combo, but it's a risk reward factor. So, you know, nine and a half point spread, there's a decent chance this game does does not stay close. Uh, but like I said, if it does, Giannis could absolutely break the slate, even at 10.9K. Now, Anthony Davis at 10.3, neither him or LeBron look good. They just were below average. 18.7 uh, boards, two assists for, for AD in 31 minutes. Now, I do think they bounce back here. Uh, the matchup is better, too, against Dallas than it was against the Clippers that last game. Um, and Dennis Schroeder, and we'll get to him, but I think him being in the offense might take a slight hit. Like, not a huge hit, but a slight hit to AD, a slight hit to LeBron. You know, with the, they they uh, they liked having Schroeder with the ball in his hands, so maybe a slight hit to these guys usage-wise. But, you know, AD, I expect about 35 minutes from him. Um, I do like the matchup against Dallas. I do think he bounces back, so maybe the ownership drops in him. I think I slightly do prefer him to LeBron James, but it's close. It's really close. It's always close if they're about, you know, priced about the same. But yeah, AD, like his upside. Jokic at 10-1, firmly in play as well. Late night hammer here. He's a guy that can stuff the stat sheet. Um, you know, at times, Jokic, I guess the downside I have to say about Jokic is Denver is now fully healthy, right? So they have, they have a healthy Barton, a healthy Gary Harris, Um at times, Jokic will just be so dominant and super aggressive on the offensive end and take over. And then there's other times where he'll, he'll defer offensively and like shoot the ball like eight times in a game. So which Jokic are we going to get? I don't know. 10.1 feels about right for, for Denver having a fully healthy team. So I think he's a fine play. I don't know if I'm going to prioritize him though. Now Zion's at 8.1K. Again, he's power forward and center eligible as well. Um, he had 15 points, 10 boards, three assists, one steal, one block in 30 minutes. And I expect about, you know, 30, 35 minutes from Zion Williamson. Um, you know, with him versus Ingram, I think Zion probably has a, a little bit of a higher floor compared to Ingram. But when Ingram gets it going, he might have a little bit of a higher ceiling compared to Zion. Um, again, we'll get to Ingram in a bit. Uh, so 8.1 and we'll get to Ingram's price. I think he's at, where is he, 8.3K. 
close with who I prefer against Zion. I think it might be slightly higher floor, whereas Ingram, I think, has a little bit of a higher upside. Um, the match against Miami is not great, not terrible. Um, so both are solid plays. I don't know if I'm really prioritize either one of them, though. Again, no progress stops for Zingas. We'll talk about Luka. I think it's obviously one of the better spenders of the slate, even at his price. Bam and a bios at seven eight. So I like the matchup here. Um, you know, individual matchup wise though, like Steven Adams is is still a decent defender. Uh, but I expect you know thirty five plus minutes from Bam. This game should be played at a fast pace. We'll talk about Hero and Drogic in a bit. I think they're my favorite plays point per dollar on this Miami team. But you know, with Bam versus Jimmy, I think I slightly do prefer Bam. Um, it would be close there too as well. But yeah, Bam definitely viable there at seven point eight k. Now with Allen versus DeAndre Jordan, Allen's at six four, Jordan's at five six. They're going to split the center minutes. I expect like low twenty ish minutes for both. I don't know if one really stands out, uh, so I'm probably going to look elsewhere. Now Wiseman's at six two. Did play twenty four minutes again. Kind of got there ba- mainly in garbage time though. So. <sighs> It's tough. The price had come up two to six two. He's a talented player. I think he's more of a GPP play because you know if he was still in like the four K range, the mid four K range, then I would like him a lot more. Six two. We've only seen one game from him. And again, he got there. A lot of it was in garbage time. So I think Wiseman is more of a GPP play there for me. Brook Lopez at six K. I don't think I. I think I prefer other plays if someone plays. Like I'd rather play Harold at six K. Now, I do want to mention Harold played thirty two minutes. He played that many minutes because Gasol got in foul trouble. He played, he got five fouls in like 12 minutes, so that's not going to happen again most likely. So don't expect 32 minutes out of Montrezl Harrell, but I think we probably get 25 or so. I think that, that's about a, a fair guess. I think the plan is to play Gasol like close to 20 minutes, Montrez like about 25, and then you know will they close with Harrell and AD? I don't know. They could just close with Anthony Davis in the five. So I think a fair guess for Harrell's minutes is about 25 minutes. The matchup is good. Again, he's an energy guy. Can get you the offensive rebounds. So um, I do like him in the mid-range. Again, I like that he's power forward center eligible as well. Now, Steven Adams is at 5.9K. Uh, we saw 31 minutes from Steven Adams. So I think that that's pretty decent. Um, he's a guy that's probably not going to break the slate, but I don't think he's going to kill you either. I think he's like a safer option. You know, I think we probably can get somewhere between 25 to 35 fancy points here from Steven Adams. Again, talk about DeAndre Jordan. Now, with Tice versus Tristan Thompson, they actually started both together. Both played, like, low 20s minutes. Um, I think that was due to the matchup against Giannis. Curious to see if they do it again against Brooklyn. We'll see. Either way, again, if they both start, eh, and they both play, like, mid, low 20s minutes, I don't know if, like, one really stands out there. Now, Ibaka versus Zubak, this is another close one. Ibaka played uh, 21 minutes. Zubak played 27 off the bench. Um... I thought it would be the other way around. I thought like Ibaka would play mid twenties minutes and Zubak would come off the bench and play about twenty. So will that continue? I don't know. I think the ownership might go in favor of Zubak. I still think I give the edge to, to Ibaka. Um, I think he's still a little bit more talented. Um, so yeah, that that one's a really close one. But I, I would give the edge to Ibaka, even though he did play a few less minutes the last game. Now Paul at five one. I mean they'll use him. They'll use Maxi Kleber. They might throw like a Collie Stein or Boban in for a couple minutes. The match against the Lakers not necessarily the best. So. I'm probably going to look elsewhere with Powell. Again, Boban, don't have to play him. Millsap before 9 is all right for value. There's really, if you look at the slate, there's not a ton of great value plays. So you're going to have to probably, if you go like a Stars and Scrubs approach, you're going to have to play like one or two guys you're not really comfortable playing. So yeah, Millsap is fine. Um, he's like a third or fourth option in this team. He's kind of washed at this point in his career, but I guess he's not the worst play. I'm not going to get to Markeith Morris. With Chris and uh, Kevon Looney, both kind of got limited. You know, Chris, I think, played, what, 12 or 13 minutes. Looney played 12. Um, neither played a ton. Chris is the better point for guy than Looney, so I'd still rather play Chris, but he can only play like 12, 13 minutes. That's not a ton. With Bobby Portis, again, we're probably getting about 15 to 20 minutes off the bench. He can have some big games. Uh, you know, if the game does blow out, maybe he plays a little bit more. So I think he's a viable play, but would have wished he was a little bit cheaper too. Again, Gasol, I think the plan is to play him about 20 minutes, but... Also kind of washed at this point in his career. Now, Kelly Olenek actually does intrigue me at 4.1K. He played 20 minutes tonight for, for the Heat. So if we're going to get like 15 to 20 minutes out of Olenek off the bench in a good matchup, I actually have some interest because he's a good offensive player. Right? We saw it in the NBA Finals. Like when Bam and a bio was out, Kelly Olenek had a massive game. So he's a good shooter. If we get like 15 to 20 minutes, there, there's really not a ton of value. So Olenek is definitely someone I'm considering. Jeff Green, I don't like besides Levert off the bench, there's really no one on Brooklyn that I'm I love off the bench. I'm not gonna play Pat Patterson and Looney, barely gonna play. Um, and that's really it for center. So 
Um, oh, last guy I'll mention is Prashad Chua at 3K. He did get a decent run. Um, I should look at it. I think he played... Bear with me one second. I want to see how many minutes he played, actually, um, because I remember looking at that, and I saw he was uh, in the rotation. He played 14 minutes. He is the min price, so again, I guess you can consider him. Um, but like I said, value is it's kind of hard to come by on the slate. Robert Williams is at min price, too. I mean, if they start Tice and Tristan Thompson together again, then Robert Williams probably gets 10 to 15 minutes. He's a good point per minute guy. So, yeah, you can throw him in the player pool, but that's really it for center. Let's move on to power forward. So, I mentioned Giannis, I mentioned AD. Kevin Durant at 9.4K. Again, all of Brooklyn looked great in that last game. But, again, that was against Golden State. The match against Boston is a little bit a little bit tougher, right? Not as – or Boston is, is better defensively than Golden State. Um, Kevin Durant's at 9.4. We have Kyrie Irving at 8.9. It's tricky because when they're priced about the same, I, I usually, like, I'll give the edge to KD. I think he just has a slightly higher floor, but I kind of want to play the Kyrie revenge game narrative. We'll get to that. Um, I think other people think of the same thing, like Kyrie revenge playing at Boston. So maybe you look to KD to get a little bit different. Again, it's a close call there, really. Um, but Kevin Durant firmly in play at 9.4. Again, got limited the last game because of the blowout. I expect, you know, 30 to 35 minutes from him. He's a, he's a guy that can do it all. You're getting him at a little bit of a discount off AD and off of Giannis Antetokounmpo. So I do like KD. Also, I've been interested in Tatum. Now, these Boston guys, again, last year they were, they were a pretty balanced team. Well, there's no more Gordon Hayward, and Kemba Walker is still out. So the offense is going to run through Tatum. It's going to run through Jalen Brown. And, you know, Teague will be a decent usage guy off the bench. So the matchup is really good here against Brooklyn, too. Like, Brooklyn is not a good defensive team. This game should be played at a faster pace. You know, I expect probably close to 40 minutes from Tatum. So I like Tatum. I like Brown. Um, both Boston guys look pretty good against Boston. This is a team that is a little bit different now, right? Because there's no more Gordon Hayward and Kemba's still out. So you kind of know where the offense is coming from. It's it's the two wings, right? It's Tatum. It's Jalen Brown. Ingram mentioned him with Zion, right? I think Ingram has a little bit more upside, but also has the lower floor. Like he had a big game tonight, but if you guys follow me, followed me in the preseason, uh, played Ingram in that most recent game and he got like five fouls and like, 20 minutes and just did nothing and that was so tilting um so yeah i think the upside is a little higher with ingram i think zion may be a little bit of a safer play so again depends how you're playing the slate um kelly Oubre is at 7-1 i'll pass on him and wiggins that's just too pricey for me i'm gonna pass michael porter jr too again denver is fully healthy still no draymond green uh for golden state but probably can't get to pascal a uh, chalk boss uh, in uh the first game of this season kuzma feels a little bit pricey for guys probably gonna play mid 20s minutes off the bench um, other options. Dorian Finney-Smith, I don't think is the worst play. He's a lower usage guy, but with Dallas, you know, all this, you know, Dorian Finney-Smith, Luca, Josh Richardson, Hardaway should all play over 30 minutes. Still no Porzingis, so I think he's an okay value. I think, you know, you're going to get the minutes. The minutes will be there with him. So, yeah, I think he's definitely somebody you're going to for value. Pascal, price came up. Again, he looked terrible last game. If you want to go back to the wall because you let so many people down, including myself, then you can for low ownership. But how can you feel comfortable with this? Again, they started Toscano Anderson over him in the second half. So, oh, now Batum's a four or five. I don't really want to play Nick Batum, but if Marcus Morris is out, I think he would be someone we can consider. There's not a ton of great value, and Batum would probably play about 25 minutes. So, yeah, potential value there if Marcus Morris is out. Let's see. We went over Bobby Ports, talked about Kyle Lynette, because I actually think he's a decent value play. James Johnson at 4K. Um, actually, I noticed he was in the rotation tonight for Dallas. I'm curious to see how many minutes he plays exactly. If he's a guy that's going to like get 15 to 20 minutes, I think he's someone that would be in play for value. But I'm curious to see what he finishes with tonight. Again, that game is going on right now. Um, Pat Patterson, not really interested in him. Uh, I'm not going to get to Mo Harkless. And uh, Torian Prince, I guess the last guy I'll mention, will probably play 15 to 20 minutes off the bench. He is super, super cheap. So like, I think you can give a look to him for value. Um, if you are going with that stars and scrubs approach, but that's really it for power forward. Let's move on to small forward. So LeBron at 10K again, both him and AD struggled. Don't expect that again. He did roll his ankle, so gotta keep an eye on that. Um, but the matchup is really good here against Dallas. Um, the downside again, I mentioned it. I think a slight hit was Schroeder down in the lineup. I think it is a slight hit to, to LeBron and AD, but still wouldn't expect you know what we saw from them the first game. I do expect to bounce back. Got to monitor the ankle news. Like obviously, if LeBron can't go in this game, then AD becomes like probably the the top spend up and then you know schroeder would look really good then kuzma would come more viable right but i expect lebron to go um i do expect to i do expect him to have a better game um and, and again minutes wise i would say probably mid mid 30s minutes for both those lakers starts quiet leonard 9-8 now with him versus paul george 
Um, I'll say the same thing. Kawhi Leonard is probably the safer option. He has a little bit of a higher floor. Paul George has a low floor, but he's also cheaper. And when he when he's getting hot, like we saw uh, actually in opening night last night, Paul George can have upside. So I guess it depends, again, how you're playing it. I think Paul, Kawhi, Kawhi still has upside too, yeah, but he just has a higher floor than Paul George. Uh, just that he's uh, about $1,000 cheaper. The match against Denver is not necessarily the best. So um, I think for me, it would be more of a contrarian play there with Kawhi Leonard. Um, yeah, talked about Tatum. I do like him. I do like Jalen Brown. Uh, we'll get to Brown here in a sec. Jimmy Baller at 8K, yeah, close uh, there with me with him versus Bam and who I prefer. I think I slightly give the edge to Bam, but we'll get to Hero. We'll get to Drogic. Those are the guys that look the best point per dollar. Now, Middleton played 38 minutes tonight. Giannis played 36. So if Budenholzer is going to run these guys a little bit more, that makes him even more viable. But like I said, the same thing I'll say about Giannis, about Middleton. This game is the best chance to blow out. So, you know, if he only plays three quarters, he's probably not going to get you there. But if it does stay close, then I think one of Middleton or Giannis uh, will absolutely smash. And we'll talk about game theory-wise, but you know, if you do play one of those guys, then it probably makes sense to run it back with Steph because for Golden State, if Golden State is going to stay in this game, I would say about, like, what, 90% of the time, it's got to be because of a big game from Steph Curry. So we'll get to Steph. But, yeah, Middleton, 38 minutes. Giannis, 36 minutes. That is good to see. Levert at 7-2 had a massive game off the bench. Crushed. 20 points, 9 boards, 5 assists, 2 steals, and a block. Don't expect that again, but I do like these coming out the bench. Now, the price, though, it jumped a good amount. So this is one, it's tricky because I love Levert. I love playing Karis Levert, but I feel like the ownership might be might come up after that, that big game. Um, I think for me, I would rather, get, rather just pay a little bit more for either Kyrie or KD. Um, so Levert, for, for now, I think is more of a contrarian option for me. And not going to get to Ubre. Mentioned Brown. Brown and Tatum I like for Boston. Great matchup here. Again, there, there's no no more Gordon Hayward and Kemba Walker's out. So you kind of know where the offense is coming from. It's coming from. It's those two wings. I like them both in a good matchup. Um, Brown at 7K. Uh, you know, Tatum probably has a higher floor, but he's also 9-3. Brown 7K. I think Brown does look like a really solid play there at his price. Wiggins, you guys know if you watch my content for over two years now, I do not play Andrew Wiggins. No way. I'm not playing him. Uh, yeah, Barton feels a little pricey off the bench. Josh Richardson at 5'4", I think, is a fair play. Yeah, because someone's going to have to help Luka Doncic score. So when, when, when Chris Hopps is running because he's not there. So, you know, you have Jay Rich, you have Hardaway. You know, we have guys like Dorian Finney-Smith. So, you know, Hardaway's probably the next in line for scoring. But Jay Rich is a guy that can stuff the stat sheet. I'm going to expect over 30 minutes from him. 5'4", seems like a decent price. Joe Harris, I think, is, is viable as well, but know where you're getting into with him, right? He's kind of depending on the scoring, but he should have open looks, playing alongside KD, playing alongside Kyrie. Like, he should have a lot of open looks at three. I expect about 30 minutes. He played 21 in the blowout, so I think he would have got one more shift, like eight or nine minutes. Probably would have played about 30 minutes if that game stayed close. I think he's a decent play in the mid range. Again, does have a somewhat low floor if he's not sh- hitting a shot. Gary Harris, I'll pass. I'd rather play Joe Harris at a similar price. Um, again, but got him under Marcus Morris's status. Uh, talked about Dorian Finney-Smith. I'm not going to get to Josh Hart off the bench at 4-7. Feels like that's a little pricey. KCP at 4-6. Didn't play as many minutes as he thought. Um, I think we'll probably, you know, a safe guess for him is, is about mid, like 25 or so. Another guy relying on the scoring. I think I slightly prefer Joe Harris for a little bit more to KCP. Both are similar plays, but I just think, I just think Harris has a little bit more upside that, than KCP. Dozier, I'm a big PJ Dozier fan, but 4-5. Uh, it's like DraftKings did a good job, right? They're pricing up all these guys. Like, he's a high usage guy off the bench, but probably not going to play more than like 15 or so minutes. Uh, Redick off the bench intrigues me. He'll probably play 25 or so minutes. He's a good shooter. So he's someone I think you can look, give luck to for value. But like I said with Harris, like I said with KCP, you know where you're getting into. Like, the floor is low uh, if he's not hitting his shots. Other options, Kennard. So, didn't look great in the first game, but. The thing with Kennard is they gave him a big contract, four years, 64 million. So obviously they want to give this guy minutes. He only played what, 20, 21 minutes the last game. So I expect about the same. Uh, also relying on scoring, but again, with value being hard to, to come by in the slate, I think you can give a look to him. You know, like a Baysmore, not going to play a ton, but I, I guess you could make the argument that like if Golden State gets blown out, that maybe he plays a few more minutes. I don't really want to play Iguodala. I'm not playing Harkless. I can't. THT was barely in the rotation last game. That's really it for me. So let's move on to shooting guard. Uh, Paul George at the top of 8-7. So had a, a great shooting day. Shot the ball 
13 of 18. We can't expect that again. And like I said, floor is low if his shot is not falling, but upside is there. So at 8.7K, he's still a guy that can go for 50 plus, but he could also go for below 20 if he's not hitting his shots. So Paul George is a good GPP play, but if you're playing cash games, I probably will look elsewhere. Um, talk about Milton Lavert Again, talk about Jalen Brown. I do like him a good amount. Not playing Andrew Wiggins. Marcus Smart at 6'7 is fine, but would rather play Brown at a similar price. Would rather play Tatum for a couple thousand dollars more. So Dennis Schroeder at 6'3", I think will be decently popular. He looked good. He had 14 points, 12 boards, 8 assists. Again, he had the ball in his hands a lot, which is good to see. And he's an aggressive player. Now, I wouldn't expect this level of production again. I expect AD and LeBron to have better games. But if we're going to get like 30 minutes of Schroeder, and if he's going to play the point a lot in a good matchup, I think he's definitely in play at this price. The only issue I have with Schroeder is people are going to look at that last game and he probably he might be a little bit over But But um, again, it's also good that he's point guard and shooting guard eligible. So, you know, you can play like three point guards if you want to. Um, Barton at 6'3", again, a little pricey there. Hardaway Jr. 5'9". So he's a guy that also has a low floor. But when getting it going, like he, he, can, he can go for 40 plus if he's hitting his threes. And like I said, someone's going to have to help Luka Doncic scoring the ball. So Hardaway, viable. Um, you know, with him and Josh Rich, and again, I think Hardaway's probably more of the GPP play. Jay Rich is probably more of the cash game play. Now, Dinwiddie actually intrigues me at 5'7". Had a subpar game, 10.7 board, seven assists, six boards uh, in 25 minutes. I expect over 30 minutes from him. Um, he's $1,500 cheaper than, than LeVert. If they're priced about the same, I would prefer LeVert. But Dinwiddie is, again, $1,500 cheaper. He's starting. I think we probably get about 30 minutes from him. I actually think he's a nice play in the mid-range. I do I do have interest in Spencer Dinwiddie. Even though he's playing alongside high-usage guys, I think he can still get it done. Bledsoe also intrigues me. He put over 30 minutes the last game at 5 6 He's point guard, shooting guard eligible. Um, you know, I think he's he's someone that I like. He can he can stuff the stat sheet. You know, the match against Miami, sure, not necessarily the best, but minutes should be there for him. Price is very fair. So I, I like I like Bledsoe. And then Tyler Hero, I do like him a good amount, um, 5.6K. He's a guy that played 32 minutes at last game. The matchup is great here against the Pelicans. Like, the Pelicans play fast and don't play a ton of defense. So, I actually like Hero a lot. Um, he's a guy that, again, not afraid to shoot the ball. Um, and uh, when he gets it going, does have a ton of upside. Lou Williams, more of a GBB play. I expect him to come off the bench, play mid-20s minutes. Uh, again, kind of reliant on the scoring. If his shot's not falling, does have a somewhat low floor. But we've seen some big games from Lou. He can still go out and get you 30 to 40 plus. Um, so viable GPP play. DiVincenzo at 4-7 is actually okay value. He played like 25 minutes. Um, expect about the same for him. Again, the matchup is really good here. So he's probably like, yeah, fourth, fifth option in this offense. But there's not a ton of great value on this slate. So, and the matchup, again, like I said, really good against Golden State. So DiVincenzo is in play. Duncan Robinson, I actually have interest in at 4-4. Another guy that reliant in the scoring. But, like, when he's shooting it well, he has massive games. So, the matchup's good here. Duncan, you know, I expect probably mid-20s minutes. We've seen games where he's pushed over 30. We've seen games where he played a little bit less. But, value is, is there's not a ton of value. So, Duncan's a guy that, that uh, again, can get hot. Um, there's a lot of guys kind of in that range. Like you have Duncan Robinson, you have, like, JJ, you have KCP, you have Joe Harris. All guys that are reliant on their scoring. Um, but, you know, do have upside when they are making their threes. The other options, again, NAW, love him, but he only played a few minutes. He's not going to be in the regular rotation. Crusoe didn't play as many minutes as he thought that, as I as I thought that last game, so probably not, can't get to him. Um, Brunson and Trey Burke, again, they're playing tonight. I'm curious to see how many minutes they actually play, but if we get, like, close to 20 minutes from, like, Trey Burke off the bench at 3.2K, I think that's that's in play or Brunson, right? Whoever gets more minutes between these guys tonight, I would probably would prefer. Um, but yeah, these guys it, again, if we get close to 50, like twenty or so minutes, then I think you can give a look to them because again, there's not a lot of great value plays on this slate. I keep repeating myself, but there isn't. DraftKings did a really good job pricing everyone up. Uh, let's finish up with point guards. Luka Doncic, ten point seven k. I think is one of the safer spend ups because no Chris ups, no Chris ups are saying guess like you know where the offense is coming from, right? It's Luka Doncic. He stuffs the stat sheet too. Sure, the match against the Lakers isn't 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 necessarily the best, but I think Luka is a really good option there at the top, a safe option. Now Steph Curry. So if you think this game stays close, then I think you're going to want interest in Steph. Now we're not getting him at the discount like we did uh, last slate, right? He's ten point two k. But same thing I said about Giannis and Milton, right? If if Golden State is going to stay in this game, 
most likely it's going to be because of a big game from Steph Curry. And he he can. He can go out and break the slate and go for for 60-plus if, if he's shooting the ball well. Um, so I think it makes sense if you target, like, one of Giannis or Middleton to run it back with Steph because, you know, with Giannis and Middleton, you need the full game. I think the only way you're going to get the full game is probably a big game from Steph Curry. So um, that kind of makes sense, at least for roster construction-wise, I guess. Um, talk about LeBron. Again, don't expect him to struggle uh, as much as he did the last game. Kyrie, again, we got the revenge game narrative. He's below 9K. Ooh, this is this is enticing. Um, now, again, I think a lot of people are thinking the same thing, the revenge narrative. Um, he, he has a ton of upside. Um, again, it's a close one with him and KD. It is. Um, I think I, I might prefer Kyrie just because, again, the revenge game narrative, I do kind of want to play him there against uh, against his former team. Jamal Murray at 85 just seems a little pricey right? Um, they're now fully healthy. So not saying he's out of play, but more of a contrarian play for me. I uh, mentioned Jimmy Butler. Drew Holiday at 7.5 is decent. Again, the matchup's great. Same thing I'll say about Middleton, right? It's just, can Golden State keep in it, keep this close? I'm not sure. Lonzo at 6.5, I think is a fine play. Um, not not like super excited about it, but not, don't think he's a terrible play. Should play, you know, close to 30 minutes. He's a guy that can stuff the stat sheet. I think he's fine. Um, yeah, we mentioned Bledsoe like him. I like Hero, and I like Goran Dragic. He's a high usage guy off the bench. He played 25 minutes. That's kind of what I expect. He's going to come off the bench, and he's going to score the ball. It's a good matchup. Um, I think he is a pretty nice play here in the mid range. Like his upside. Again, when he's out there, he's a high usage guy. So Dragic definitely considering him. Pep Beverly, they priced him up a little bit. Um, would have if he was like in the 4K range, would have liked him a little bit more. But we're probably going to get over 20 minutes from him. He's a good defender. Viable play, but I think I like the upside a little bit more on some of the other guys we just mentioned, like with Drogic, with Hero, with Bloodsill. I think the ups, like these guys are just better offensive players than a guy like Pat Beverly, even Lou Williams. Um, none, don't play none. He barely played, so do not play him at 4 8. DiVincenzo at 4 7, mentioned him. Again, I think we get to mid 20s minutes. Uh, Teague, I actually kind of like for value, just because, like I said, Hayward out of town, Kemba's out. Teague's going to come off the bench, and he's going to, he's been a guy that's going to be aggressive when he's out there. He's still a good offensive player, even at this point in his career. 4.2K. I expect mid-20s minutes. I actually do like him for value a decent amount. I think that's it for me. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. So, if you haven't enjoyed the content so far, I'd really appreciate it. Leave a like button on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And hit the notification bell so you don't want to upload videos you don't want to go live. Again, I'll tweet it out. But I think 10.30, 10.45, I'll be live uh, to go over everything, answer all your guys' questions. Uh, but thanks again. I hope you guys all have a Merry Christmas if I don't see you uh, in the live stream, uh, and I will see you guys all later.